Good morning, everyone. Hi, I hope that this somehow finds its way to going as viral as we've made everything else. All right, so I wanted to touch on a couple things that I'm seeing um, from what I did, from, from the conversation that I've had with Miriam. First and foremost, I wanna point out that we, we as a society love viral clips. We love to take 30 seconds of something, 15 seconds of something, and just whew, take it everywhere, wherever, and make our conclusions and do all of our thinking based off of 30 seconds of someone speaking. While I will 100% acknowledge that in the video that's going viral, what Marianne is saying is ridiculous. <laughs> and um, obviously my facial expressions are very clear about how I feel. And yes, she was gaslighting me. And yes, she was. She has a very um, particular, she has her own view on the situation. I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to take that away from her. Again, this is from my personal perspective and lens, right? But... I want us to be so fucking for real right now. I want us to be so fucking for real right now about what our options are, okay? We're talking about having to vote between Biden and Joe, right? No one's talking about anything else. That's why I'm not talking about third party seriously yet because I believe that the American populace is still very much bought into and only bought into and aware of the two-party system, even though that is not what we have. We don't just have a two-party system. That's what we've been given to understand. So for me, and the reason why I chose to platform Marianne and have a conversation with her, which is two full hours, by the way, there's two hours of us talking. There's a part one where she discusses her policies, what she wants to do for US citizens, what her plan is there. And then I asked her the very tough question about Israel-Palestine because for me, it's important to know where candidates truly stand on this. Now, Marianne gave me a very honest, very raw, very triggered answer, you know, because this conversation is triggering to her. She is in her 70s. She is a grandmother. She is Israeli. I mean, she's not Israeli. She's American, but I'm pretty sure she's also, she, she sympathizes deeply with Israel and the Israelis. I'm not sure she ha holds dual citizenship, but I don't really know her, her particulars like that. However, I do know that she's very clearly where her stance is. However, she is the only candidate still calling for a ceasefire. She is the only candidate who's acknowledged Palestinians as Palestinians, okay? And she's the only one who has a proposed plan of peace. Now, is it exactly the solution that is proper? No, but is she willing to hire experts who would be able to do better, a better job maybe than she will, would be able to? Yes. Is that what her proposed plan is for the Department of Peace? Yes. Is that her proposal? Because, you know, when I asked her, hey, how do you intend to do all this stuff? She said, I want to create a cabinet. I want to have people around me and in positions of power who are not related to the the profiteering corporation that gets to, you know, benefit off of it. Like right now where there's people in positions that um, have direct conflict of interest with what they do for a living and what they make money off of. She doesn't want to do that. She wants to put experts into all of these different fields who have more knowledge and who are more um, capable of coming up with solutions than she is. And that to me is something that I'm not seeing any other candidate talk about. Now, is she a perfect candidate? No, absolutely not. But we're not dealing with perfect candidates right now, are we people? No, we're choosing between fascism and fascism right now when it comes to Joe Biden and um, Donald Trump. So if you have those two options, and those are our two options, and our consciousness is being guided and directed into that being the only option, the reason I platform Marianne is so that you can understand that there's another option in the Democratic Party who actually has tangible ideas, that she really goes into deep detail in, in our live, and then on her website, marianne2024.com, you can see where she stands on all kinds of issues that you might have questions about. And also she's pretty willing to have conversations with people and clarify stances and all of the such. Now, I just want us to be for real. I'm focused right now because we still have the primaries ahead of us in January and we can still put someone besides Joe Biden into the Democratic seat to go against Trump. 
Now, she's the most progressive person that I see trying to do this. Again, I've told you guys many times, I don't believe voting is the end all be all of anything that we're doing right now. I believe voting is mediation tactic. I believe voting is danger mediation. It's safer to put, to me, it's safer to put Marianne into that position of power than it is to put Joe Biden or Trump into that position of power. And that is just point blank period for me. That is not even a question because she's the lesser evil of the three. And if we're discussing lesser evils, I like her as a lesser evil personally, because she has other ideas besides her not having the best stance on Israel-Palestine. And, you know, I know that many of us are at a point where we're like, we don't even want an evil. And I hear that. That, to me, is the third party fight. That, to me, is if it goes left and or right, I should say, and we only get to choose between Joe and Trump because establishment said so, which is kind of probably what's going to happen regardless. But, you know, I'm trying <laughs> Um, then we can worry about their party and we can talk about their party and I will be platforming their party and we will galvanize behind their party. But we're not going to go out sitting quietly and we're not going to act like we don't have options. So tap into these primaries. 